Welcome again. Today on Kemen 3, we consider another application of Hess's law. We reinforce the terms exothermic and endothermic processes. We consider how to determine delta T by extrapolation from a graph so that we can use it in calculating enthalpy changes. Let's consider anhydrous copper sulfate and its conversion to hydrated or crystalline copper sulfate. What is the enthalpy change associated with this process? Such a change is very difficult to determine experimentally, but it is possible to solve for this enthalpy change by applying Hess's law. We can determine this enthalpy change. Copper sulfate forms bonds with water molecules and goes into to aqueous solution. This bond making process is very much exothermic as the temperature of the system increases and then falls. So as 3.86 grams of anhydrous copper sulfate is placed here into 50 cm cube of water in an insulated polystyrene container, the temperature changes. The extent of this temperature change can be determined from a graph like this. And here you can see the initial temperature of 19.1 degrees Celsius and the final temperature of 26.2 degrees Celsius obtained by drawing a straight line through all of these points and extrapolating to the y-axis. You get 26.2. So the delta T then comes to 7.1 degrees. So it's possible to use mass by specific heat capacity of water by delta T, the change in temperature, to determine delta H1, the enthalpy change associated with anhydrous copper sulfate going into aqueous solution. And similarly, we can look at how hydrated copper sulfate becomes converted to aqueous copper sulfate. And here we place 5.24 grams into an insulated polystyrene container with 50 cm cube of water. As these bonds have to be broken and copper sulfate enters into solution, bond breaking takes up more energy than you have released in bond making. And a process like this is very much endothermic as energy is lost from the surroundings and taken in by the system, temperature falls. And in this case, we would also follow an extrapolation technique joining these points and we get delta T. Here delta T comes to 1.5 degrees Celsius. So now with this value of 7.1 degrees, this increase of 7.1, we note that this particular reaction was exothermic. Because of this increase in temperature, it means that heat energy was released from the system into the surroundings. To solve for this enthalpy change, we multiply the mass of the water in the cup by the specific heat capacity of water by this change in temperature. Although this value is not given a sign, we will note that at the end we are going to insert a negative sign to symbolize an exothermic process and a loss of heat energy from the system into the surroundings. So first we get this value of 1.5 kilojoules based on 3.86 grams of copper sulfate. So converting 3.86 grams into the standard of one mole we divide the molar mass of anhydrous copper sulfate by 3.86, we multiply that by 1.5 and we get 62 kilojoules per mole. Noting that we should say it's negative 62 because this is an exothermic process, one in which bond breaking consumed less energy and bond making released more energy. For the reaction between hydrated copper sulfate and water, we note that this process is endothermic as the temperature of the reaction vessel drops by 1.5 degrees Celsius. And here, heat energy is taken from the outside into the system as bond breaking consumes more energy than is released in bond making. Here, the enthalpy change for 5.24 grams being dissolved in water comes to 0.31 kilojoules. And when we solve for the value per mole, we divide 249.7, the molar mass of hydrated copper sulfate, by 5.24, and we multiply by 0.31. This comes to an answer of 14.8 kilojoules per mole. And we note that we add the positive sign because this entire process is endothermic. The final answer to the question, which is the enthalpy change associated with 
solid anhydrous copper sulfate forming hydrated or crystalline copper sulfate. And following Hess's law, we can reverse this value because we are going to go with the enthalpy change here in the reverse direction. So reversing this negative 62, we put positive 62 plus the unknown delta H equals negative 14 because negative 14 would be the reverse of this positive 14 value with aqueous copper sulfate going to hydrated copper sulfate. So reversing these two values and then solving for delta H, we see that it comes to negative 76 kilojoules per mole. And now you can compare this value with the literature values and determine the percentage of error in your experiment. Finally, I would like you to outline your plan for determining delta H. In this case, anhydrous magnesium sulfate becoming hydrated magnesium sulfate. I would also like you to predict with reasons if this process is exothermic or endothermic. And to remember that bond breaking requires energy and bond making releases energy.